Hi guys! Welcome to episode 3 of the Christmas Adaptation Series. And this time we are going to be discussing one of the most adapted Christmas, Christmas stories ever. Ever? Well, other, sure. than, other than other the than, original. Yeah, the original. Yeah. Well, the original Christmas story. Yeah. If you haven't guessed it yet, it is A Christmas Carol. So, good old Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. We didn't see the one done in 1984 with which George C. Scott. Yes, Great Scott. Sorry. And we didn't that every see... Time. Instead of Bah Humbug, he says Great Scott. We didn't see Scrooge. He doesn't really. I'm just Scrooge. Uh, yeah, Scrooge. Marine. We didn't see that. But no. we are going to watch it. But yeah. we didn't have time to see it uh, for this. So we watched the, the original... Ad well, we listened to the audiobook first. Then we watched the original adaptation. We watched a lot of these when we were kids first, but you know, it's, it's been a little while. Mm -hmm. We won't discuss how many years. Um, so we watched the original adaptation from, what was it, 1951? Yeah, mm -hmm. from 1951. Then we also watched uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol, and we watched Muppet's Christmas Carol, and we watched, oddly enough, I had the I had the realization that Girlfriends of Christmas Past could be a, a Scrooge adaptation, and we watched it, and it was. It was kind of funny. Loosely, loosely, loosely yeah. yeah. But I mean, it was still an adaptation, whether mm -hmm. it's loosely or not. So they just put a different spin on it, which was, you know, fun to watch. And I mean, come on, Matthew McConaughey and Jennifer Garner, of course. Also, Emma Stone and Michael Douglas. That was one of my favorite movies that we watched this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> that and Muppet's Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. Muppet's yeah. Christmas Carol put more of a funny spin to it, and it was just more... Did you mention the the uh, Jim Carrey? You mentioned that one, right? No, we didn't watch that this weekend, but you're right, I forgot about that. We watched yeah. the Jim Carrey Christmas Carol as well. So we listened to the audiobook that we got off of Audible. Not a sponsor. But, uh, so... That was the one that was done by Tim Curry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, narrated by Tim Curry. Yeah, he was. It was narrated by him. He did a good job. He did. I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I tried listening to one of the free ones on YouTube, and you didn't find it, the right free one. So done the by the free Tim. version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I I found one on YouTube, and I mean the narrator was okay. He was volunteer. He wasn't getting paid for it or anything. So did it was, you know that? Yeah, the company that that um, oh, okay. put these audiobooks on. Mm -hmm. It's all volunteers that do the narrating. And I mean, he did a decent job, but I found in the scenes when, when Scrooge first encounters Bob the ghost Marley. of Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley, Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been an got some dread adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, uh, that that scene, that original scene, I I found it didn't change in the, the tone at all of his reading. And I felt like it should. So I, I, I ended up buying some credits from Audible and purchased the the Tim Curry one like you listened to. And it was really good. There was a Patrick Stewart one that I really wanted to listen yeah, to. Yeah. But you read it abridged. Yeah. So it's like as opposed to three hours and 42 minutes or something, it was one hour and 30 minutes or something like that. So it cuts a lot out, but I'd love to hear him sing. Read, I would sing. too. I'd love to hear him read the whole story. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I still might listen to it yeah. because, I mean, Patrick Stewart. It's Patrick is Stewart. Awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah, I noticed some differences with, because we watched the movies before I listened to the book this time. Figured I'd switch it up a bit, and I noticed some differences, like um, the Jacob Marley monologue in the like the first scene where he appears mm -hmm. is much longer in the book. Yes, yeah. which is understandable, but um, in different movies you see it shortened or softened or done on diff in different spins. I thought it was really interesting, and I think most of it was considering their audience. Yes. Right? Yeah, a lot of that was considering the audience, like Goofy. Oh, I love Goofy. <laughs> he was so Goofy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Just so and then, and then yeah. in the uh, Muppet Christmas Carol, they changed it to the Marleys, plural, mm -hmm. so that they could have the 
the two hecklers Critic from the guys. Muppet Show. Yeah, yeah. They could have them as the uh, as the Marley brothers. So that was that was kind of cool. But a lot of a lot of the rest of that was kept true to form. Yeah, they kept a lot of the the same uh, lines and things like that. Yeah. And they did have they spooky funnier. stuff. Yeah. But then they had parts that you know relieved relieved that tension and yeah. you laugh. So, you know, great for, for yeah. kids and parents alike. I mean, I watched it for the first time when I was probably in my early 20s, mm -hmm. I think. So, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's the Muppets. Yeah, it, actually for me, it is my favorite favorite version. Yeah. My favorite version. Yeah, that's that and like I said, uh, Girlfriends of Christmas Past. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I really enjoy that movie. I love that. So the original, which also got me teary-eyed when Matthew McConaughey did the the best man speech at the end. Oh uh, yeah, like it's the brothers, the bromance. I'm I'm a sucker for bromance. What can I say? <laughs> you guys already know this about me. Nothing new. Not a news flash. Yeah. Anyway, back to Scrooge. Uh yeah. So the original, it kept pretty much to the tone and the. Uh, and most of the lines, yeah, but it did add some things, trying to explain things about why Scrooge was the way he was. Kind yeah. of like with the Grinch, with the Jim Carrey Grinch, where they were trying to explain how the Grinch ended up hating Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, and you do get that, expl that explanation some, but they were trying to make other connections, like with Scrooge and his nephew, you know, both of them saying that Scrooge's father had blamed him for his mother's death, mm -hmm. just and then Scrooge blames uh, the nephew for Fanny's death, which is not even referred to in the story at all. There's no, no the, not we don't even, even know. Of we don't even know that she died in, during childbirth. Like, but I, thanks, Pat. Um, camera shook. They were basically trying to make Scrooge a more sympathetic character. Yes, but because um, they're wanting people to feel the pain that he went through to get him to that point, but it's not in the book at all. And I mean, it's 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 a a re envisioning. It's a yeah. So like the the screenwriter, the director, they have that poetic license, I guess. They have dramatic license. Yeah, in this case, dramatic license. I think it's called still poetic mm -hmm. license, but I don't know. I still think they did a really good job, and we were saying when we were watching it that we liked that actor's take on Scrooge, didn't we? I did. He I wasn't liked, as bitter. Yeah, I liked how he wasn't, um, even in the, in the original scenes, you know, uh, some of the other takes on it, he was just, you know, cranky and Almost barking at everybody. And, and, but with this one, he was just very business-like. Like a lot of business people you, you run across, you know, and he was just very business-like and hey, it's just business. It's just business. It doesn't make business sense to give donations and stuff like that or it doesn't Not make business sense to uh, to do, do these things to marry below your status or your monetary, you know, um, level mm -hmm. and things like this, right? So, Social status. Yeah, it, he was just very business-like. He wasn't angry. He was just, yeah. And that was another line that they had with him and his nephew. He said, why would you marry against my wishes? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. But it was, it's funny to add that in, that in though. though. I think that no, he said, good. why did you get married? Why did you get married? Yeah, okay. he didn't say against yeah. my wishes. But, but that's kind of weird though, because why would he, like, well, I suppose it's just the character, but why would he expect his nephew to accept his wishes when he has blamed him all his life for Finn's death, like oh, that with their take, yeah, yeah, right, like with their take, yeah. yeah so if they're if they're having it that he blamed his nephew since his birth for Finn's death, then I would think that he wouldn't have even the the connection Interest. with him, the mm -hmm. the um, relationship with him where he would say. I forbid this marriage or whatever. Like it, uh, it, I would think they wouldn't even have any. Unless, unless it was more him. of a. He originally blamed him, and then it became this underlying irritation, but not really a conscious uh, blame. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. he would later say, "Well, obviously it's not the child's fault, right?" But 
Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I did enjoy that one though. I, I liked the I liked Scrooge in that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was more to the the language in the book as well. Yeah. When I was listening to the book, he would talk with like ye old English type deal. Yeah. And in that 1961 version, they did that. 51. 51. Mm -hmm. 1951 version, they did that. Um, but in the other versions, and it's understandable, they modernized the language. It's just a, an observation, not a criticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I, uh, I liked it. I thought it was uh, I thought it was a really good adaptation. Mm -hmm. uh, I found some of those um, added scenes unnecessary mm -hmm. myself. But then the story may have been fairly new to people then, and uh, I don't know. And they just felt they needed to do something. Like again, you know, it's it's a director and a writer's mm -hmm. choices that they want to do. But I just didn't see a need for for those things to be done myself. Yeah. Maybe it was, it, sometimes, as a writer, I know that I'll sometimes write something because I'm examining it myself, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what might have happened, mm -hmm. what might have caused this to happen, mm -hmm. or what would have pushed him to this point. So the screenwriter might have just wanted to do that, and, and then that was, his, that was his vision of the story. Again, with uh, the other ones, they were writing for their audience. So maybe we should look more at 1951 and how an audience might have perceived uh, everything that Scrooge. happened. Yeah. Them, right? They might have needed more more explanation about in order to be sympathetic to the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Stay happy, healthy and safe.